Let's look at this pretty cool trigonometry problem. So our goal is to show that the tangent of 20 degrees minus the tangent of 40 degrees plus the tangent of 80 degrees is equal to three times the square root of three. So what's the strategy here? Well, I'd like to start by observing that this is equivalent to the following statement. And that statement is tan 20 degrees plus tangent of minus 40 degrees plus tangent of 80 degrees is equal to 3 root 3. So what I did there is I just used the fact that tangent is an odd function. So essentially that means that we can bring this minus sign inside of the function. And then I'd like to also observe the following. And that is that if we set theta equal to 20 degrees minus 40 degrees or 80 degrees, then that means that 3 times theta, well, that's going to kind of obviously be equal to 60 degrees, let's see, minus 120 degrees or 240 degrees. Now, that may not seem super helpful, but let's observe that 60 degrees is equal to what radians? Well, I believe that's pi over 3 radians. And then, well, I'll let you fill in what these other two angles are in radians as well. The important thing here is that the value of tangent of pi over 3 is, well, well known. And also, the value of tangent of these other two angles are also well known. So I'd like to maybe point that out here. That's our observation, that tangent of 3 times theta in each of these cases is equal to the square root of 3. So I think that's pretty interesting that each of the angles that is built into this problem have, well, they have different tangent values. I guess I should say that. But importantly, they have the same tangent 3 theta value. So let's uh, point out that tangent of 20 degrees, tangent of 40 degrees, and then tangent of 80 degrees are all distinct. So no two of those are equal. And that's actually pretty important for our strategy here. I guess I should point out that we know that these are distinct. I forgot my minus sign there. We know that these are distinct because tangent is an increasing function on the interval, well, minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. In other words, on the interval minus 90 degrees to 90 degrees. But if it's an increasing continuous function on that interval, then it must be 1 to 1. But if it's 1 to 1, then that means that, well, none of these can be the same. I guess since it's increasing, we can kind of immediately see that none of these are the same. Okay, great. I think all we've done here really motivates us to look for a triple angle formula for tangent. And that's what we're going to do now. And in order to do that, we're going to use Euler's formula for the complex exponential. So let's recall that e to the i theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. But that means that we can take any complex number, I'll call that complex number z, and we can express it two different ways. We can express it as a plus bi, or we can uh, express it as r cos theta plus i times r sine theta. But let's observe that if we were to maybe divide b over a here, that's the same thing as dividing sine over cosine here. So in other words, we would get b over a equals sine over cosine, which equals the tangent of theta. So that gives us a way of looking at the tangent of theta for theta, the so-called argument of a complex number, via its rectangular form, the rectangular form of the complex number. Okay. So let's maybe like get into that. So we are maybe going to bring that observation up here so that we have it. And so if 
we have the argument of a complex number z is equal to theta. The argument is simply the angle here that we express it with inside of our polar form. Um, and we have z is equal to a plus bi, then the tangent of theta is equal to b over a. Okay, great. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to cube z a few different ways. So let's start like this. So we know that z cubed on the one hand is going to be equal to r cubed and then e to the i 3 theta. Okay. But then on the other hand, we know that that's going to be a plus bi cubed. But then we can multiply that out. That's going to give us a cubed. And then let's see, it'll be minus 3ab squared and then plus 3 times i times a squared b and then minus i times b cubed. So I got that just from multiplying it all out. There's not really anything to do there. But notice that I wrote it in terms of all of my real parts in the left hand chunk and then my imaginary parts in the right hand chunk. And that motivates us to, let's see, uh, factor out as much as we can for one thing. So we can factor out an a here and we have a squared minus 3b squared plus, and then we can factor out uh, an i times b here, and we have 3a squared minus uh, b squared. Great, so something like that. But now, let's look at this. We know that the argument of z is theta. That means that the argument of z cubed is 3 times theta by the calculation going left here. But then we also know that the argument of z cubed will be equal to, let's see, this imaginary part right here divided by the real part right here in the expansion. Because notice that purple underline and that green underline are playing the role of just the plain old b and a for z. Okay, great. So, well, what does that tell us? So, when all is said and done, we have the following the tangent of 3 times theta is equal to, let's see, it'll be b times 3a squared minus b squared over a times a squared minus 3b squared. So we've got something like that. But now I'd like to write that as follows. I'm going to write that as b over a times, now I'm going to uh, rewrite this next bit of it by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 1 over a squared. And that's going to leave me with 3 minus b over a squared over 1 minus 3 b over a squared. But now observe up there, we know that b over a squared is the tangent of theta by what we said originally. But that means I can replace all of these b over a's with simply the tangent of theta. So that's going to give me what? Well, we're going to have 3 times the tangent of theta minus the tangent cubed of theta over 1 minus 3 times the tangent of theta, where I went ahead and I multiplied the tangent of theta that we get from this b over a through to the other bit. But now let's note the following, and that is if theta comes from our set of angles right here. So I'll just say that theta is inside of this set 20 degrees, minus 40 degrees, and 80 degrees. Then that means that, well, first of all, tangent of 3 theta equals 3 root 3 by our previous discussion, but we can just replace tangent of 3 theta with this stuff over here. So that means we have 3 tangent of theta minus tangent cubed of theta equals the square root of 3 minus 3 times the square root of 3 times the tangent of theta, where I took the liberty of just multiplying through. So just to reiterate, I got that from 
setting this equal to the square root of three, and then, well, clearing the denominator, if you will. Okay, good. So now we're in a pretty good spot to finish this thing off, so let's do that. So if you've stuck around this long, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, also think about subscribing. It would really help us out. Okay, so here's what we ended with on the last board. So if theta come, came from our set 20 degrees minus 40 degrees or 80 degrees, then we had 3 tangent theta minus tangent cubed theta equals root 3 minus 3 root 3 tangent squared theta. And I'd like to point out that I had a slight typo on the last board where I forgot the square for that tangent of theta. But now we also know that tangent 20 degrees, tangent minus 40 degrees, and tangent 80 degrees are all distinct by our previous discussion. So what does that mean? So that means that tangent of 20 degrees, tangent of minus 40 degrees, and tangent of 80 degrees are, now I'm going to write it like this, distinct solutions to the following cubic polynomial equation. So we'll have 3x minus x cubed equals the square root of 3 minus 3 times the square root of 3x squared. Because notice if we evaluate this at x equals any of those, then we would achieve this up here, which is satisfied by the calculation that we have already done. But notice that we can rewrite this polynomial equation as the following. Zero equals, so let's see, I think the best way to do it would be x cubed minus 3 root 3x squared, and then minus 3x plus the square root of 3. Good. But check it out. That's a cubic polynomial equation. We know that cubic polynomial equations have three roots counting multiplicity. But check it out. These are three different numbers that satisfy this equation. So that means that these are the three roots. So that means that we can also factor this in terms of those roots. So this will factor as x minus tangent of 20 degrees times x minus tangent of minus 40 degrees times x minus the tangent of 80 degrees. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to do one last thing, and that is I'm going to take this minus sign here, change it to a plus by changing the minus 40 to a 40, just using, again, the oddness of the tangent function. Great, but now what we can do is re-multiply this out and then just keep track of the coefficients of x cubed, x squared, so on and so forth. So if we were to multiply this out, we'd get x cubed, and then after that we'd have minus tangent of 20 degrees minus tangent of 40 degrees plus tangent of 80 degrees, all multiplied into x squared. We get that from choosing two of the x terms when we're multiplying out and one of the constant terms. And then we would have plus, and I'm just going to put here more, because in fact it doesn't matter for our purposes. Because check it out, we've achieved our goal. Notice that the coefficient of x squared in this expansion on the one hand is our tan 20 minus tan 40 plus tan 80. But on the other hand, it's also minus 3 times the square root of 3. But of course, that means that we have built our formula that we wanted to build. And that's a good place to stop.